What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Mile Higher Podcast, episode 172. Today, we're really switching things up from our normal true crime that we've been doing most episodes. We know that's most of y'all's favorite types of episodes, but we like to throw some other things in there here and there. And one of our top requested topics that people want us to kind of dive into and share our opinions on is the hollow earth theory. Very interesting stuff. So we are going to be looking at that, whether there is a possibility of a civilization being on earth or maybe just animals being under inside the earth. Yes. Yeah, sorry. Yes. <laughs> Did I say the, on the earth? Yeah. There are animals on the earth. Yes. Yeah. There are animals and people here on the earth. I meant in the earth. Yes. Yeah, so we're going to be talking about the possibility of the earth being hollow. So there's actually, so everything we know about the earth right now is that there's all these layers and then there's mm-hmm. the core and then, you know, close the book, call it a day. That's what's going on. But there's actually a ton of evidence to suggest that there is perhaps gaps within the layers of the earth perhaps there's even an ocean underneath mm-hmm. our oceans like there's so many there's possibilities. actual evidence for that right um, there's a lot of scientific evidence to suggest that there is possibly pockets of of land or even potentially some other type of sun you know inside mm-hmm. of the earth that could in turn provide life underground to us but yet it could be above ground for them that's what's weird is yeah. it's like We're above the ground. We consider ourselves above the ground, but perhaps we're underground for some other civilization. Oh, that's weird to think about. Yeah. I mean, it could, you know, it could be something like that. So yeah, it's actually a really interesting thing to theorize about because there is actual evidence to back it up and you know, ponder it. Well, I mean, yeah, it's a theory. Not so enough to add evidence to actually prove we're it. We're not going to prove it to no, you that this is real. It I mean, can't be proved, but can. it really can't be disproved. disproved. Well, that's the thing with, I think, a lot of theories and conspiracy theories is like there's enough evidence to make you question it but there's not mm-hmm. enough evidence to fully make you you know 100 percent believe it because there's right. just not enough information to call it fact and that's yeah definitely where i fall right and then there's science and science can prove things to a certain extent but a lot of science is based on theories mm-hmm. a lot you know and natural laws and things like that that were discovered by human beings but at the end of the day you know, they're theoretical facts. Like there's obviously things that are concrete facts, but there's a lot of, of things that are based on theories made by scientists based on facts. Like it's very, it's a little uh, cloudy when you start looking at all of it, but. Yeah, and I think this is one of those theories that kind of gets roped in with the flatter theory a lot, where people kind of think it's all sort of the same, but this one is way different. I mean, yeah. there really is We're not just a talking about like the shape of the planet. I mean, flat right. earth is, basically the earth is flat yes that is that is what it is <laughs> <laughs> right and then hollow earth is still based on the fact that the earth yeah. is a sphere it's just there's at least we're starting a hollow core. with a spherical yeah. idea in the exactly. of this theory <laughs> so it already has more credibility yes. than flat earth yeah it's actually pretty interesting i think you guys are going to like this one yeah we're going to get into possibilities of civilizations and what they could be and what life would look like for inner civilizations even so that would be crazy I really can't wrap my mind around it. Yeah, it'll probably blow your mind, honestly. So when I was a kid, I used to think that we lived in the earth. And then I remember, yeah, because I was like, how do we just, because then someone told me like, no, you're on the outside of the earth. And I was like, how the fuck are we not flying off then? They're like, cause the gravity, (laughs) bitch. And I was like, (laughs) I just remember my mind being blown. And every time I think of it still like, I'm like, what? You thought we were inside because when you look up, you just see see the the sky. sky. So you thought that was like the outside of the the planet. I, I, was like, oh. what do you mean there's people? I was like, so someone's standing upside down then? Because if the earth is round, there's people on the bottom. Then they're like poking out. They're standing upside down. Like, why aren't they upside down? It's, I can it actually blew my mind see forever. as a kid how you would be confused about that. I was that so for confused sure. for a long time. Isn't that weird though? Like, <laughs> what we never, we're always right side up. Right. Mm-hmm. But what we're not, actually really? not. Yeah. Like, yeah. But yet it feels like it for us. It's, it's such a trippy thing to really think about we're, the fact that we're just clinging to the surface of this right. giant rock flying through space at thousands of miles per hour and rotating saying. and yet we're just like everything's just stands still for us yeah you know? but it's all moving right. subtly we just can't perceive well, we're it. actually flying around so then uh-huh. i don't know it just blows my mind so i'm like you go it's outside tilting, like, and the only thing that's keeping me on my on the ground is my little two feet and then the rest of me is just like sticking out like if i picture it big picture here's the earth here's me it's like beep, little me sticking out the side <laughs> yeah i mean if you went past the atmosphere 
but you have i know but when i was a kid i did not understand that at all i was like what the hell yeah and we have like i would be the perfect amount of gravity to keep us on the surface like yeah that's pretty incredible Mm -hmm. because that doesn't exist on most planets no it's things like that that makes me feel like there's a divine meaning to everything because it's just it's a little too perfect you know well mm-hmm. the earth is alive personally. so maybe the earth is yeah. conscious and and aware of so. the fact that we're here and is keeping us safe for now and mm-hmm. keeping holding us to the to its surface but mm-hmm. by a thread yeah <laughs> by a th- <laughs> but maybe we'll have to retreat underground and join the rest of the inner civilizations oh wouldn't that be a twist and they're like welcome home we've been waiting for you guys i can't imagine it's good under there though well for but if it's hollow there could be a possibility you walk you go down deep enough and then there's a whole nother surface a second surface but it's within a- well they say there's an ocean down there that's three times as big as what if it's literally like bikini oceans? bottom <laughs> like Maybe it's literally it a world underneath you just start hearing that song as you go down i'd be down like oh shit <laughs> what if they're all just chilling under there having a great time yeah, you exactly. just gotta join in uh, yeah unlikely I know. but let's get into this theory let's stop well, fucking around well before we get into the theory we do have a few things i want to talk about oh yes so uh, we have a few updates with higher love wellness we do a big update for higher love wellness that we're really excited about Many of you guys know that our CBD business, Higher Love Wellness, is run completely by us. We don't have any investors. It was an investment on our part. So we're very slowly expanding the business on purpose. And we recently brought our shipping in-house. We got our own warehouse and we're doing that whole process on our own. Right, exactly. So by doing that, it has sort of allowed us to basically take the prices that we had to launch with and we've kind of gone back to the table and be like okay now that we're able to save money on our packing and shipping costs Mm -hmm. we can actually transfer those savings from that we're getting to you guys to the customers so that you can save more on our products and and hopefully it will open up to even more people that maybe you know weren't sure if they could afford it and obviously like we got into this business we're not in this business to like get rich or anything like that that's not our goal we're here to like help people we truly believe in in what we're doing and what cbd can do for people so Mm -hmm. we want to try to make our product as affordable as possible while also maintaining the same quality because that's like the big thing with our brand Mm -hmm. and you know you might be out there like well what makes you guys different than every other cbd brand because i mean cbd is everywhere now it's gas stations grocery stores it's but it's not all the same quality no unfortunately it's not so you know that's what really makes ours different is it's small batch so we make things in very small quantities at a time. It's very, very fresh. So from the time it goes from, you know, the actual uh, CBD distillate that we make to the final product is very short amount of time and to your to the customer mm-hmm. is even shorter. So it's really fresh when you get it. It's fresh. We also do some different things with our, you know, our actual formulation. We include a few more minor cannabinoids than other brands do, which only enhances the effect of the CBD. Uh, if you didn't know, there's a bunch of other minor cannabinoids um we put cbg in our tinctures which just helps sort of activate the cbd a little bit more and help it work a little bit better with your body so we're very excited to announce that we were able to slash prices on all of our items pretty much and Mm -hmm. by a good amount actually so a lot of things that were you know might have been a little bit too expensive should be a little bit more affordable for people Mm -hmm. so we just made those changes uh the other night and And we got new packing Yep. We're mm-hmm. really excited. The warehouse is all set up and running now. It's really fun. We've got our friends and family working this whole business. Seriously. It is. It's a truly a small friends and family business. Yeah. Like that's it's really fun. It is it's fun. So cool. It's a lot of work, but it's a lot of fun. And, and I also just want to say thank you to everyone who supported us so far by buying anything. You have, you know, allowed us to hire more employees, get our warehouse, and launch this thing to the size that we eventually want to get it to. Yeah, I mean, the success of it has just been so great and honestly mm-hmm. just surprising, like how much support we've gotten with it and how fast it's grown. We're truly thankful for for all of you who have supported us. And yeah, we hope we can, you know, bring some of those savings back to you guys and just allow yeah. you to to use more or mm-hmm. maybe, you know, give you the op- that opportunity to try something now because uh, things are a lot more affordable. So if you haven't checked out higherlevelwellness.com yet, definitely do. For all of our podcast listeners, you actually get 10% off with code HOMIES yes. at checkout. So Even more savings. Even more savings. <laughs> but yeah, so that's what we got going on with Higher Love Wellness. And then lastly, before we get into everything, Planet Sleep. 
has been just blowing away my expectations honestly like Mm -hmm. I'm super happy with how it's how it's gone so far. We have two episodes out, or I guess when this comes out, there'll be three, three episodes out on various locations. Amazon and, Rainforest and Galapagos Island are the first, and then very good. Siberia. Oh, Siberia is next. Which Siberia is a really interesting place because it's so vast that it actually has it has everything from you know when I thought of Siberia, I thought it's just snow everywhere. Mm -hmm. But I mean, we're dealing with rainforest to snow to you know, grasslands, like it's got all these different types of environments and ecosystems wow. within this one region mm -hmm. of Russia. It's really, really cool. So yeah, three episodes and everything's going well. And yeah, and people have even been telling us they're playing it for their kids, yeah, that's which so is cool. awesome because we don't have any other content that's for kids. Right. Hell <laughs> or no, could we be don't. Listen to, but yeah, <laughs> please don't have your kids listen to anything else we do. But the sleep podcast is totally kid friendly and it's beautifully done. It's educational. And it has great visuals as well. So it's not just a listening experience. You can watch it as well and learn something new. It's really awesome. Absolutely. Proud of you, babe. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's get into this hollow earth theory. All right. So according to the hollow earth theory, or it's known as the inner earth theory, the planet may have vast interior spaces underground that potentially could contain life whether it's humanoids or aliens or some other type of civilization, there is a possibility that it could be there. Now, this theory dates back hundreds of years and was believed by some of history's most prominent scientific minds. Scientists, philosophers, astronomers, and mathematicians hypothesize that the planet is literally hollow or that it's made up of some kind of honeycomb structure, which is interesting because obviously there's gaps in between honeycombs and there would be enough space to support full ecosystems. So when you think about the earth, you could think of it like an onion. It's got all these layers. So the crust is like the thin skin of the planet and it's only 25 miles thick. Beyond this is the 1800 mile deep mantle, which is made of solid rocks, minerals, and semi-solid magma. And then beyond that, right at the center of the earth is the core and the core is hot, dense metal made mostly of iron and nickel. So the distance from the surface of the earth to the center is about 4,000 miles. So the crust 25 miles thick in the grand scheme of 4,000 miles is really just a tiny, tiny percentage sliver. of no. what encompasses the inside of the earth. Well, when you look at those classic charts, you can tell it's just such a small bit. Yeah. Yeah. It's tiny. I mean, we're talking like literally mm -hmm. like the thin skin of your body pretty mm -hmm. much. And then the center is would be like your heart, you know, if you're going to think about it that way. So one of the things I've always thought about too is like, well, why haven't we like drilled to the core of the earth? Like we have all this technology. We know more about our moon than we do, you know, what's under our feet. And the problem is, is that we have in fact tried to drill a deep, deep hole into the earth uh, through a borehole and the deepest one to ever be drilled was the Kola Super Deep Borehole, which was started in 1970. And this is the deepest man-made hole on the entire Earth and deepest artificial point on Earth. This hole is 40,230 feet deep. How so long did it take them to do that? 20 plus years Holy to drill this. Shit. So if you look at, if you were to look at this in sort of in a scale form, the hole is deeper than the Mariana Trench which that's the deepest point of the ocean. And it's deeper than that. Deeper than that. And we have bare, we barely know what's at the bottom of the Mariana Trench. Right. I mean, this is a massive, massive hole, seven and a half miles deep. I mean, think about that for a second. That's, yeah. that's super deep. And they had to stop because it was hot, right? Right. So the problem, so what happened was, is they drilled about one third of the way through the crust at eight miles and the drill bit, couldn't go any farther because it just gets way too hot at that mm -hmm. depth. Could start and you're not, it, right? Yeah. And you're only, you're not even almost through the crust. I mean, you're just a percentage of your, the way through it. I mean, you're like a third of the way. So that's where we had to stop because we just didn't have the technology to go any deeper. And so that's as far deep as we know, you know, we can go. So mm -hmm. any deeper than that, we have literally no idea what's, what's there. That's wild. So we assume that it's just hot rock, hot, mm -hmm. you know, magma, things like that. So why would we want to go any deeper? 
it's interesting now because this this hole is located in russia actually and locals that live near it because you can actually go and visit it today it's not open thank god <laughs> can't fall into it but locals claim that they could hear souls screaming from hell <laughs> that's <laughs> fucking scary Comforting. right <laughs> so there so hell's down there well i mean some people some people think that hell's below our feet right oh wait actually yeah now i'm curious is there like a collective place that those who believe in hell like where it is because i know that like i'm not an expert but in theory heaven is like up above right well and then to some people to some i pe think it's varies based it on does. religion in person some people believe it's curious. in another dimension okay or, I was, i'm not but familiar. yeah i think the classic idea so, is below and above so yeah so the traditional view of hell according to the bible and i would say what most christians would believe even i don't i don't know that much about catholicism but from a christian point of view the bible states that hell is inside of the earth it's the lowest oh parts it really of does the earth. say that it's there. literally the center of the earth hmm. so that's why that's why they would make comments like that. Like if you dig drill, if you drill deep enough into the earth, you're eventually going to hit hell, mm -hmm. which is at the center of the earth because then heaven is above you. But when they dug, they didn't get nearly that deep. No, exactly. So, but, so they heard the screams. Apparently they heard the screams Hundreds coming from hell. Yeah. Okay. Still, still thousands of miles to the core. Interesting. Damn. Sounds scary. <laughs> Very scary. So then in 2014, a team of 20 geophysicists used seismic readings to locate a large body of water in a mineral layer 400 miles into the earth. And they believe that it holds three times the amount of water of all of the world's oceans combined. Wow. Let that sink in and process for a second because yeah. the surface of the planet's largely covered in water and oceans. Yeah, I said that at the beginning of the show. Yeah, it's that's the most wild thing to wrap your mind around because... That's likely there. This is based off seismic readings. So obviously mm -hmm. it's open for interpretation. There's no f hard physical proof that there is water there, but based on the seismic readings and you know the, the other data mm -hmm. they collected, they were able to assert that that's what it is. It's a body of water that's there. It would actually make sense too. It would. You know. It would. I mean, we drill wells into the mm -hmm. ground to get water. But we're not drilling that deep. Right, right, right. But yeah, but, I mean, why wouldn't there be more water right. when we're so... Why wouldn't there be more water yeah. farther into the earth than just mm. in the crust? Perhaps, the you know, the mantle and maybe even there's water at the core. And NASA has acknowledged this as well, that well, this is a possibility. Yeah, I mean, this is, this is widely accepted by the scientific community mm -hmm. as a possibility. But obviously, a lot mm -hmm. of scientists are going to say, well... The evidence would show that it's more strong it's a more strong opinion to say that it's actually just rock molten core maybe it's magma maybe yeah. it's not water maybe it's a liquid magma that's just really really hot that is what they're detecting but yeah i don't know the exact specifics on how they came to the conclusion that it was water potentially but i think it was based on measurements of you know that they that they were able to collect through the seismic readings that they they did so i'm not a seismologist so i can't give you the exact <laughs> breakdown of yeah. that but yeah but just i mean if 20 geophysicists are saying this i think you have to take it into consideration at least definitely i want to lay out some of the science behind this before somebody's just like yeah this is just made up fairy tale like who gives a shit and then you know doesn't want to hear this because i think you have to know that there is a possibility for this to, to actually be real and exist before you dive into sort of all of the the lore and the stories and stuff from ancient cultures because mm -hmm. it's interesting that ancient cultures believed in yeah. inner earth civilizations believe there is another even Many world of them. Mm -hmm. within the earth and this is you know you can find this in pretty much all of the ancient texts so it's it's pretty interesting that now with science you know we think we're figuring stuff out but there's still a lot of questions so scientists have studied the Earth's interior using seismograph readings during earthquakes and computer modeling, but these models are based on theories and assumptions and not proven facts. It's possible that technology used to determine the layers of the Earth and their makeup aren't as accurate as scientists once thought. So again, we have to go back to Albert Einstein because the guy was a genius and he he's literally helped shape 
science so much. It's, it actually blows my mind how his theories have really helped us start to figure out the nature of the universe. So in 19, especially this one, this yeah, one of the most important things he ever brought forward. Right. So the, obviously Albert Einstein's theory of general relativity, I mean, we still use it today. It's mm-hmm. helped us explain a lot of things, but simply put massive objects cause a distortion in space time, which is felt as gravity. So the theory argues that gravitational waves are distortions in the fabric of space-time caused by cosmic events. In 2017, scientists observed the collision of two super-dense neutron stars for the first time, which created an explosion or a kilonova, a cosmic event. And the kilonova sent a ripple through space-time to Earth 130 million light years away. And this detection of gravitational waves created by the kilonova that distorts space-time on Earth had never been seen by humans before. And this event proved Einstein's theory of general relativity and changed our understanding of gravity's relationship to mass. So this is important because this is going to, I'm going to lead you into the question of how do we even calculate mass for the planet? Because if you think of it, so the question is, well, if the earth is hollow, then wouldn't that make our, our measurements for weight of the planet off? Yeah. Like how do we, how do you weigh a planet, right? We right. can't put the fucking planet on a scale and, <laughs> yeah, yeah. and weigh it like this. We have to use these theories that people come up with, you know, that are based Equations. on equations. Yeah. Based on different factors and then calculate it that way. But is there a possibility that those are incorrect? There's Could always be. a possibility, right? right? So the mass of the earth was first calculated using the Cavendish experiment in 1797 which measures the force of gravity between masses in a laboratory setting. And according to the experiment, the attraction of an object at the Earth's surface to the Earth itself can be used to calculate the Earth's mass and density. And this was the first test of Newton's law of universal gravitation, which has now been replaced by Einstein's theory of general relativity. A little physics lesson. In physics, mass is the quantity of matter that a body contains and can be measured by the force exerted on the body by a gravitational field. So if the Cavendish experiment determined the mass of Earth using a now disproven scientific theory of gravity, then the actual mass of Earth is unknown. It's likely that the Earth's mass and mass of other planets have been overestimated, and these bodies may have less matter and density than previously thought. Hmm. It's because we're using basically disproven yeah. equations to get to these estimated weights for these planets and in cosmic bodies a majority of people don't know that no you know well i mean so like in school you're just like taught everything is fact Mm -hmm. and that's how you learn it and i never remember my teacher being like well you know this is how this is the theory that (laughs) was put forward and this is how we calculated but there is a possibility that this is all wrong (laughs) no of course they're not going to say that well textbooks just aren't written that way they're written no in a way that is like this is fact this is fact this is fact this and same Mm -hmm. with history and all the other textbooks oh the history ones are the worst right so it's like they don't leave any room for critical thinking or or any sort of debate on whether or not these theories are actually accurate or not that's really sad because it could be very useful in a classroom to be able to discuss something like yeah, that, that and that's, think more critically. No, you're just kind of like, I mean, and so many kids end up just like not paying attention because you're just kind yeah. of getting talked to versus yeah. you should be participating in the, dis- it should be a discussion. Especially it's so with rarely made interesting, you know? Oh, right. Yeah. It's like blah, blah, blah. The earth's mass is mm-hmm. 1 million. Like, oh, and I just like, got to uh, remember this stuff. Yeah. You're just trying to memorize numbers and stuff, but rather yeah. like, how did they actually figure this out? I know. Like when you I've think never about how thought they, like that, how they figure it out in school. Yeah. We're using equations that are written by two individuals in yeah. history. Yeah. That's and wild. for all we, I mean, for all we know, Einstein could be, be wrong about a lot of things. Mm-hmm. I mean, he was obviously on to the truth for a lot of things, but I think there's mm-hmm. a lot of things that down the road we're going to find he was completely wrong about. Yeah, it's quite possible. It happens all the time. On. Yeah, it does. Mm-hmm. We we think things are fact or we, we think things, you know, science changes all the time. I mean, and let's hope in that in 100 years from now, we're using some new equations or we've found some that are incorrect because don't we want to continue to evolve? Well, how do you even come up with an equation in the first place? That That's the <laughs> real know. trippy question. That's <laughs> then, <laughs> way above us. Then my mind starts going of like, okay, all this like AI we have and these, you know, this technology that's getting smarter and smarter, faster and faster. We can't keep up with it. 
So then I feel like it's only a matter of time before computers are coming up with all these answers of yeah. why things are such an... I think you're exactly yeah, right. Like, it's like mind blowing to think out. Oh, about. it's so true. It's bound that, like, to happen. We're not figuring that out anymore. We just created something that's so fucking yeah. smart that can, is way smarter than us. And then boom, within right. a few years, it has the answers. <laughs> right. And I'm sure that's already being done. I'm sure they've mm -hmm. already given AI Einstein's, you know, theory of general yeah. relativity and had, had it start it researching it and right. figuring out, is it correct? You know, is it correct, correct in relation theory, yeah. to trying to figure out mass and density of, especially cosmic objects. I mean, mm -hmm. to be able to say, oh yeah, the sun is this. <laughs> right, right. Or, or, you know, Jupiter is this, but it's like, how do, how do we we're really basing it off that? of like distance and, and different mm -hmm. factors in order to come up with a rough estimate. But ultimately, there's no way to know exactly and for sure what is the density of the earth as far as like what is inside it i mean we have no way we've never imaged it we have never we've never seen through it we don't know if it's hollow or not and that's why it's so strange that certain people get so weirded out by theories like this or they think it's just loony talk yeah because they feel they're threatened. so confident yeah with the way things are that they don't even have room to think about what if it's wrong what if there's a mistake what if there's things we haven't learned yet people think we just know everything and yeah. you should accept everything the way it is and that's and, why people idiot. walk around with their head in the clouds because they're just like they think everything's already been predetermined and figured out and therefore that's how i should live my life and accept everything as fact and obviously i i'm not saying question you know things that are concrete facts that there's apps you know yes when you do question it and there's no other logical right. pathway from it then yes then you're just like fantasizing except the accept it as fact but if when you there's have reason to believe otherwise right maybe there's something to that keep poking what what yeah. what's the hurt in trying to figure out is there other alternatives it's especially so when you're talking about history and you know things that i mean history for example is like passed down from from what who wrote the first history book? I mean, a lot of it's <laughs> passed down by word of mouth. It's all passed down. And then and then Pearson, whatever view, they get, mm -hmm. where are they collecting their materials from? Oh, the school mm -hmm. book. Yeah, the, yeah, the company that makes all those, a lot of the textbooks and stuff. It's like, yeah. it's very selective. When you start mm -hmm. d digging deeper, you realize so much of the information is very like controlled and filtered. Oh, yeah. And like, yeah. you know, we put it in this nice, neat format so that we give it to kids. But yet kids have no idea that like, Oh, there might be this possibility, this possibility, mm -hmm. this possibility, because but they don't want people thinking like if that. If you, look, I was gonna say, if you look at the bigger picture, if you train kids at a young age to question mm -hmm. what they're being told and to question things, then they're gonna do that in their adult life, and that's the mm -hmm. fucking opposite of what the government and everyone else wants. Right. Yeah, they well, want it's a discouraged. factory. I mean, schools, especially the public school system, is just a factory at the end of the day. Like it the really curriculum is. is created in a specific way to. In, get kids in, get them out, get them into the working force, get kids mm -hmm. in, get them out, get into the work. Like there's no feed them the pr propaganda mm -hmm. that we've decided yeah, on. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. It leaves little room for interpretation and, and just, you know, it's, I mean, to some extent they have to educate people in a way that they can do it in mass amounts, mm -hmm. which I understand. So you do have to sort of package things, but I think, you should leave in the critical thinking part of it. Yeah. Like, could it have been this way? This is what we believe happened, but maybe it was different. Here's some other theories. Right. Go over them with your class. <laughs> right. You know, like that would never happen. Right. I mean, I think there's obviously teachers out there that are cool and they, they do mm -hmm. sometimes do that. But for the most part, especially science teachers, I feel like yeah. science teachers are very like, Mm -hmm. I mean, they, they went to college, they, they stuck and obviously depending on what university you go to, you, you might get a different version of events. I mean, especially when you get into college, I feel like things really get sort of filtered because you're then getting, you're literally at the mercy of your professor and what their views are. And, the, and a lot of professors teach from their experience, yeah. teach from their point mm -hmm. of view, and you're not getting, you're getting that particular person's view on mm -hmm. biology, chemistry, physics, astrophysics, whatever it is. I mean, it's the same reason why I, I personally am not a huge fan of Neil deGrasse Tyson because same. he is he is so like by the book, you know, and my book that yeah. he doesn't he, he just thinks everybody else is like beneath him and then doesn't mm -hmm. understand, you know, does doesn't he understand mocks people. Who right. He'll mock think of different people. things. He denounces aliens pretty much. Yeah. The idea, which is pretty out there. Yeah. I mean, most most people in the space community acknowledge aliens at this point. Yeah, and, and just to be so, he's just like it's probably not. 
yeah it's just like right and just to be so negative about it not mm-hmm. and you know not even really consider it i mean in this particular sit- like case we're talking about hollow earth inner earth one person that comes to mind is graham hancock and he's he's amazing he's been ridiculed by the academic world for his entire career for mm-hmm. even presenting the idea that there could have been a, a, an advanced civilization that was wiped out during a mass extinction that we literally just have no record of or that advanced civilization is actually the one that retreated to inside the earth and perhaps is living inside the earth and and you know if you can't present any concrete facts you just get labeled a looney tune and yeah. booted yep and you know if you're not is. jumping on the train with everybody else then they just you just get classified as a crazy which i think is crazy <laughs> that is crazy it's very unfortunate so let's go back to seismographs for a minute because there's actually some more information that might actually lead us to believe there is you know a lot more going on underground than we thought so seismographs are used to record the motion of the ground during earthquakes and these readings have proved that the earth has some density but the readings also raise some questions seismograph readings are not an exact science and there are a lot of inconsistencies so that's why people would say that's you know finding an ocean that's bigger than all the our oceans combined is probably may or may not be true yeah may or may not because seismograph readings are not a lot of people say science. it, it possibly could be true though absolutely like lean more in that direction absolutely scientists included absolutely so seismic waves are measured as they spread and in readings they disappear and reappear so it's theorized that these shadow zones which happen when the readings disappear occur when the waves hit a molten core or another possibility is that the waves disappear into caverns or underground seas that are miles beneath the surface or into what we're calling inner earth one of the things you might be thinking is okay if there is this inner earth or there is you know this hollow part of the planet underneath our feet well how do you get to it and we already talked about how you know drilling eight miles down you know we never reached anything hollow but scientists dating back to the 17th century have believed that the earth may be hollow with entrances at the poles the north and south pole just like cave systems or deep areas of the ocean, inner earth may have an independent ecosystems with bodies of water, plant life, animal species, light sources, and maybe even intelligent beings similar to humans. So this idea that there's entrances to inner earth at the poles was first proposed in 1692 by Edmund Haley. And the Eng- one who created Haley's Comet, right? Named, yeah, or named, was it. named after, yeah. <laughs> he didn't make it himself. Right? Yeah, yeah, he crafted <laughs> of <course>. it up. <laughs> no, I meant named it, named after him. Edmund Haley, hmm. exactly. He was an astronomer, mathematician, and physicist. He believed that the Earth's shell or surface was roughly 500 miles thick, and within it were two inner concentric shells, each with their own magnetic poles. And between these shells was an individual atmosphere, light sources, and an ecosystem, and each one rotated at a different speed. Light sources? Yeah. That's confusing. So because they had their own poles, there'd be these rotating magnetic fields, and we've observed this on other planets through NASA satellite images before, So he theorized that escaping gas from these rotations actually caused the aurora borealis or northern lights. And these lights are thought to be collisions between electrically charged particles from the sun that enter the Earth's atmosphere. And according to Edmund Haley's theory, the particles that create the dancing lights come from within the Earth, escaping through entrances located at the poles. So he believed that they're actually being emitted from within the Earth, which would then suggest that light could be within the Earth as well. So if you actually look at NASA's satellite images of the South Pole, you can actually observe that there is a dark spot located literally at the center of the South Pole, which could be an entrance to inner Earth and where basically the light is escaping into the atmosphere, which is pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so if you look, you can kind of see how there's that dark spot right there. Mm, It like consistently stays in that spot too. Yeah, and then the actual- That's interesting aurora borealis lights almost being emitted from it wow Hmm. and that's from that's from nasa satellite image so maybe they really do have a life light source right beneath the ground that is so weird and that just can't even imagine can't wrap my mind around right and that could be an actual entrance into inner earth through the poles that's how you get to it but wouldn't we know about that maybe we do and we just well i'll get into that a little bit more for why it is highly protected it is very highly protected they don't let people fly over it for a reason yeah that's true yeah Mm. 
So a lot of other prominent scientists agreed with Edmund Halley's theory of hollow earth and added their own thoughts. In fact, in the late 1700s, renowned Swiss mathematician, physicist, and astronomer Leonard Euler theorized that the earth was entirely hollow with a central sun spanning 600 miles. In the early 1800s, the influential German mathematician Johann Carl Friedrich Gauss said all of our Earth's history, physics, and geography could be explained by the Earth being a hollow planet with entrances at the poles. So the idea of the hollow Earth theory goes back hundreds and hundreds of years. Mm-hmm. This is not some new like conspiracy that's been put yeah. forth. This has been something that's been researched for many, many years. So going back to the dark spot that you saw in the South Pole that's also on the North Pole, there's actually laws that prohibit any aircrafts from flying over the poles and satellite images don't give a clear picture of what's really there. NASA rarely provides clear images of the poles and usually they're covered in snow or ice and other times the area is just completely blotted out. In images of other planets and moons released by NASA, the poles are also mysteriously covered. So that's weird. It's very weird. Because is there more going on there that they just don't want us to see? Because obviously somebody has seen what's you know going on at the poles. I mean, we have the technology to be able to zoom in and see what's exa- you know at those right. dark spots and what's actually going on there. But that's so nobody sketchy. can fly over it, and they're all you know basically kept out of the public's eyes. Which obviously there's other theories about what it could be that they're protecting. Right. We don't, that doesn't prove this one necessarily. There could be other things. There could be other reasons for why they're, you know, we're not able to see mm-hmm. these, these pole spots where the poles are. Right. Could be, you know, bases mm-hmm. could be, I mean, there's endless series, or it could just be some, they, they're worried about affecting the actual poles themselves. Like maybe it'll affect the actual magnetic field of the earth. I mean, there's a lot of things. Maybe there's some technical scientific explanation for, for why. Yeah. The poles, you know, can't be seen, but Mm -hmm. it is interesting that there's laws that you can't fly over it. That to me is a little, little suspect. So let's talk about caves for a moment, because I think caves are one of the biggest indications that we don't really know what's below the surface, because the inner earth may just be a bunch of huge cave systems that go miles and miles deep that just are unexplored. We have no idea that they're there. For example, the Mammoth Cave National Park in Kentucky claims to have the world's longest cave system. So far, 412 miles have been explored, and it's estimated that there may be an additional 600 miles. 600 miles of caves, and caves go down. What's the deepest cave you've been in? Not very deep. Like <laughs> 10 feet in one, maybe? 10 feet? What? What, what have you been in that's deeper? Carlsbad, man. Oh, yeah. I've How never been to is... Carlsbad. Canyon. Really? Oh, we got to go there. It's so cool. I know. Cool. We should have. Maybe uh, my, kids, my uh, parents took me as a kid. I don't remember, but. In uh, New Mexico. Yeah. Uh, how deep is Carlsbad Caverns? 1,600 feet. You went all the way in that? Yeah, I went to all the way to the bottom. I could not oh, do that. That's cool. That oh, would freak me out. Yeah, you have God, to hike. No. You you can, well, there's an elevator there that you can take oh. an elevator <laughs> down. You know, so the, the elderly folks and disabled can, mm-hmm. can see the bottom of it. Yeah. But I hiked down it, and it took a long-ass time to go yeah, six, 1,600 feet underground. Damn. Yeah. I don't think I could do that. No. I'd have the mental weirdness of, like, yeah what the fuck what happens if something cave? yeah and i gotta get out quick and i can't or something yeah i feel like i'd get a little it's a weird it's a weird feeling I, I remember it just feeling really weird mm-hmm. thinking about when they're like yeah you're like a fifth of a mile underground and i'm like can't you experience like yeah. sickness too if you're like the elevation or something yeah just or the you're air like, like there's some type of like like stomach thing or something i don't know maybe not well, but the air quality is different it is too. it's well it's the very pressure moist and and stuff and yeah. cave sickness yeah the only <laughs> cave i guess i've been in other than like the cenotes in mexico was that one in glenwood springs at the adventure park <laughs> oh yeah i forgot you know about thing? that fucking thing yeah. yeah i think i've been on that yeah those are yeah, but those, like those are like little mining but, tunnels yeah yeah, mm-hmm. yeah exactly so yeah. you guys have been in like some mining shafts yeah. before but i've never been in a real cave no neither have i, I think it would freak me out and people that go like spelunking like Spelunking. Go deep into the ground. Yeah, that's what it's called. Oh, I've never spelunking. Heard of that. Yeah, spelunking. people that explore caves. It's fun to say spelunking. I'm a splunker. <laughs> splunker. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a cave in Vietnam called the Sun Dong Cave, and it's large enough to fit an entire New York City block with skyscrapers up to 40 stories high. What? That's mm-hmm. unbelievable. Yeah, mm-hmm. this picture. If you're not watching, it's just shows a person at the bottom of the cave and just how far above yeah. them it goes. It's it's really unbelievable. 
But in this cave, there's a large underground river. There's two river crossings and a tropical jungle. Wow. Beautiful. So there's literally so like cool. a whole other world in this cave. Imagine how many caves there are out there that have something yes. similar that we don't even know oh, about. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. A lot. Definitely. There's a there's a ton of caves up in the uh, Smoky Mountains. Mm -hmm. I think I've mentioned the show on, on uh, Malhar before, but the uh, boonies. There's a guy that lives in totally unexplored cave system oh, in the smoky show. mountains and he lives like he goes he says he goes like a mile underground and that's where he actually like has his belongings and stuff and it takes Sleeps. him like two oh, no. hours to get out of it or something like oh i'd go nuts he lives just in pitch darkness in a cave that is unexplored that just goes on and on and on he's like i haven't even been able to explore the whole cave because it just goes on and on and on and on Wow. underground that's amazing reminds me of the grinch or something yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> but this cave in vietnam and it was first explored in 2009 and it's so large it literally has its own climate so i mean that just shows you that the possibility of there being you know a, a surface ecosystem. level ecosystem deep underground is very possible yeah when you think about it that way it makes a lot more sense it really does. And I mean, in 1997, an archaeologist by the name of Holly Moyes led an expedition to survey a large cave system in Belize called Acton Tunichimuno. Let me say that again. Oh, no. Acton Tunichimuno. Acton Tunichimuno. Chilmino. Acne Tunichimuno. <laughs> oh, boy. Look. Acton Tunichimuno. Good. Excellent. Thank you. Nailed it. <laughs> But this is an extremely complex system of chambers that go three miles underground into the earth. And the team, when they were exploring it, found thousands of offerings to ancient gods and the skeletal remains of human sacrifices. And as they traveled deeper into the cave system, the trail seemed to have no end. Descriptions of this cave system can be found in the Popova, a Mayan creation myth that describes a cave as the entrance to the ancient underworld Zibalba. Zibalba. And this is just one example of an ancient culture that believed there was a basically another world deep within the earth. But we're going to get into the main story of the inner civilization known as Agartha. But before we do, we're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back. Today's episode is brought to you by Third Love. We love Third Love. They have been supporting our show for years now. They're one of our first sponsors, actually. Third Love creates high quality underwear, sleep, and loungewear that your body is going to love being in. They have cup sizes double A through I, including exclusive half cups and lounge and sleepwear sizes extra small to 3X. So get ready to feel comfortable. Third Love has a great fitting room quiz that surprisingly can tell you quite a bit for being just an online quiz. But I ended up finding out I was in the wrong cup size, so I was able to get in the right cup size. They make sure that you're getting the right shape for your individual breasts because our breasts come in many different shape and sizes. Third Love obsesses over each stitch, so you never have to think about how something feels, looks, or wears. While trends come and go, Third Love has always stayed true to one notion. We do comfort and you do you. If you need more support, Third Love's number one best-selling 24-7 classic t-shirt bra provides all the comfort and support that you need, and it comes in more than 80 sizes. They also have washable silk pajamas. It's luxury that's almost too easy. Plus, they stand behind their products. If you don't love them, exchanges and returns are free. Third Love's team of expert fit stylists are available via chat or email to answer all of your questions. And Third Love is the largest donor of undergarments in the United States. They've partnered with organizations in their local San Francisco Bay Area and across the United States. Third Love has donated over $40 million in product to help women make powerful life changes. And they even heal injured turtles. So a very cool company that definitely gives back. So if you want to check it out, you can get 20% off your first order by going to thirdlove.com slash mile higher. That's 20% off your first purchase at thirdlove.com slash mile higher for 20% off today. You know what stinks? My dog's farts. Nothing's worse than waking up in the morning to my dogs just farting in my face and realizing that I now have to get up out of bed and take them outside so that they can take a poop. But you know what? Things don't have to stink. Neither do you. So try Native. Native cares about the products you put on your body. They're about stopping the stink the right way. That's the native difference. You probably already know about Native's legendary aluminum-free deodorant. 
But have you tried their body wash, toothpaste, which is mm, so good, or their brand new mineral-based sunscreen, which you know how important sunscreen is. Yes, Native now has a broad-spectrum SPF 30 sunscreen for your face and body. It's lightweight, absorbs quickly, and you can choose between unscented or coconut and pineapple. Mm -mm. Native's on a mission to overhaul your entire hygiene routine by putting the care in self-care with products carefully made to work against odor that are made with simple ingredients and smell great. You can get their deodorant and body wash in amazing scents like coconut and vanilla, citrus and herbal musk, lavender and rose, which is my personal favorite, and more. Nothing's better than coming home from the gym and lathering myself up in lavender and rose body wash. Yes, guys, you can use it too. And their deodorant, some of the best aluminum-free deodorant I have ever tried before. Once you go aluminum-free, you'll never go back. What I love about Native is that you can even build your own personalized product bundles. Mix and match three of your favorite scents and keep them on rotation so you have something for every occasion. Stay fresh, stay clean with Native by going to nativedeo.com slash milehire20 or use promo code milehire20 at checkout and you'll get 20% off your first order. That's nativedeo.com slash milehire20 or use promo code milehire20 at checkout for 20% off your first order today. Did you know that a simple fingerprint can unlock tons of insight into your reproductive health? I'm talking egg count, menopause timing, if your hormone levels indicate conditions like a thyroid disorder or PCOS, all things that are good for you to know whether or not kids are in your future. There's so much about fertility that's a complete mystery. That's why Modern Fertility was created. It's the easy and affordable way to test your fertility hormones at home with a simple prick of the finger. Then you mail it in with a prepaid label and you'll get your personalized results in 10 days. Traditional testing with your doctor can cost over $1,000, but with Modern Fertility, you get that same information for $159. And if you go to modernfertility.com slash mile higher, you can get an additional 20% off your test. It's a great deal. Also, if you have HSA or FSA, you can put those dollars toward Modern Fertility. You'll get insight into your hormone levels, how many eggs you have, and other important fertility factors. And the results go deep into what every hormone means, and you can talk one-on-one -on -one with a fertility nurse to review your results and your options for next steps. If you want kids today or maybe one day in the future, clinically sound info about your body can help you make the decision that's right for you. Right now, Modern Fertility is offering our listeners $20 off your test when you go to modernfertility.com slash milehire. That means that your test will only cost $139 instead of the several hundred or even thousand plus dollars that it could cost at a doctor's office. So get $20 off your fertility test at modernfertility.com slash milehire. That's modernfertility.com slash milehire. So let's get into talking about Agartha. Stories from ancient civilizations around the world include descriptions of the seven realms of inner earth. No matter what culture, continent, or time period these stories originated from, there are striking similarities and consistent details. Creation stories, for example, include several common themes. The most relevant is that there is a world beneath our surface where life began and where we will ultimately return. According to the Mayan calendar, humans have survived four cataclysms that destroyed life as we know it on Earth. The first three cataclysms were caused by wind, fire, and ice. When the ice melted, a great flood was the fourth cataclysm. We are living in the fifth world that emerged from that event. Does that mean we're due any day now? Well, I mean, that's Many why they always say, say that the Mayans predict this we kind were of stuff. overdue. <laughs> oh my God. Um, but it'll be oh. Okay, it's getting dark. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> And humans were able to survive as a species by retreating to a subterranean world beneath the surface. The lost city of Atlantis is a breakaway civilization that retreated and never came back. So and that's... This is in theory, of course. Right. Well, I mean, some people, yeah, Atlantis never existed. But mm -hmm. I think there's there's actually a good amount of evidence. We have a whole episode mm -hmm. on Atlantis, by the way, if you haven't seen it. There it's is actually a lot of evidence to suggest that perhaps there was an advanced civilization with advanced mm -hmm. technologies and that this was atlantis mm -hmm. and when you know great flood or some type of cataclysm happened we believe that you know atlantis sunk in some way mm -hmm. and you know they just were all perished they all were demolished but there's also a theory that they actually because they were advanced beings they had advanced technology for the time period they were able to retreat to somewhere within the earth 
And that's also a theory they have when it comes to the Mayan civilization as well, that it, they didn't just collapse or get wiped out by some natural disaster, that they actually escaped destruction by fleeing to inner Earth. Pretty interesting theory. It really is. Agartha, or as it's known by different cultures, Agartha, is one of the most well-known kingdoms of inner Earth. Like I said just before, Atlantis may have retreated to inner Earth and may be the beings that exist there. But whether or not it's Atlanteans or some other enlightened beings, they're basically supposed to be an ultra-terrestrial species that lives within the Earth. Obviously, we talk about extraterrestrial species all the time. That just means that they live beyond the Earth. The city is supposedly ruled by the supreme ruler or the king of the world who lives in the capital city of Shambhala. The ruler and his subjects can influence events that happen on the Earth's surface, ultimately affecting the development of human civilization. Human development may have been slowed down in order to protect the Earth, or it might be sped up to help advance things like medicine and science. Tibetans believe inner earth is a real physical place that we can visit and that the spiritual nature of inner earth comes from its location inside our ever evolving planet. Inner earth has millions of inhabitants and many races just like the surface world. There are several different species of intelligent life and these groups can be in conflict with one another in terms of if and how they interfere with humans. Depictions of these other races often include reptilian or avian qualities and other unusual traits. That to me is interesting because I feel like the extraterrestrial species, which we've also covered on the show, the reptilians and the avians are a very common theme that we see throughout lots and lots of different Mm -hmm. cultures. Like, for example, in ancient Egypt, the deities like Ra and Thoth Mm -hmm. had human bodies with bird like heads. So it. You know, I think when we look at that at first glance, we're like, okay, they're depicting a human wearing a mask yeah, over their right. head and that's what they're drawing. But is there a possibility, that, in fact, that is what this humanoid looked like? They actually had the bird of a head mm-hmm. because that's just the type of species that they are. And Thoth was our teacher, bringer of knowledge. Scribe, to the earth. yeah. I mean, he's he's supposed to know pretty much all of the answers to the universe and brought us a lot of different knowledge that we have now. Other deities were described as humanoid figures with different colored skin and unusual heights. I mean, they said they range from different, you know, from your normal human height of six feet or so to up to 10 to even 14 feet tall. Shambhala is thought to be a kind of paradise, like the Garden of Eden. In the Hindu tradition, it's sometimes called the land of the worthy ones. And they believe this is where the Vedas or the Hindu scriptures originated from. Vedas are a very interesting collection of texts too. And in Sanskrit, Shambhala means the place of peace and tranquility. All depictions of inner earth include some type of flying vehicles that move swiftly and soundlessly through the air. What does that Mm, sound like to you? A UFO. (laughs) Some type of flying saucer, maybe. Ancient astronaut theories say yes. That's right. They do say yes. (laughs) The Ramayana is an epic poem about the adventures of Rama, a blue-skinned emissary from Agartha. He travels on a kind of an aerial vehicle called a Vimayanas, which means chariot of the gods. He was actually in this character, I guess, was in my favorite movie growing up. Really? The Little Princess. You know, I've talked to you about it like a million times. They actually have this whole scene in the beginning where she's like kind of communicating with him. It's really interesting now thinking back. Yeah. hmm, Why that was in there. I don't really know, but I maybe need to watch that movie again. Very interesting. Another epic poem, the Mahabharata, refers to the abode of the excellent ones, which is ruled by the Naga. And in this text, Nagas are described as highly advanced half-human, half-reptiles with jeweled hoods to light their way. The city of Patala is also inhabited by these reptilian humanoids, which are sometimes described as a race of half-human and half-serpent beings. They are very technologically advanced and highly intelligent. And stories about the underworld often include some form of reptilian humanoid. So they're just basically you're just trying to point out that there's similarities in all of the different. I mean, Hinduism is the oldest religion on the planet. Yeah. I mean, it goes back farther than any of the others. So to me, I'm like, you know, if you're going to take one particular religious text seriously, you got to take them all seriously mm-hmm. because what makes one different than the other? I mean, they're all going to be, they're all old, they're all passed down. So it's interesting to me that there's so many similarities in the types of beings that you know, or deities between the different religions and how they all sort of tie into this idea of this inner earth civilization. Yeah. 
Agartha. That's really interesting. The realms of inner earth exist in the space between spirit and nature. And glimpses of this are seen in ancient stories like the Celtic Otherworld or the Christian version of Purgatory. It's an intermediary plane that exists between the spirit world and reality as we know it. And spirit becomes nature and nature returns to spirit. So there are characteristics of both physical and celestial. There are several entrances to Agartha from the surface world. The most prominent entrances are what we've been talking about, the North and South Poles. And Tibetan Buddhists believe a tunnel underneath the Patala Palace is an entrance to the inner earth city of Patala. And this tunnel is guarded by lamas or spiritual leaders. Some speculate that there are entrances in the U.S. even. Inside of Kentucky's Mammoth Cave, beneath Mount Shasta, California, which tons of wild things have been seen at Mount Shasta, so I wouldn't be surprised on that. And in places like the Bermuda Triangle, which that's a whole mystery in itself. And obviously the Great Pyramid of Giza, which doesn't doesn't surprise me either. But inner earth is believed to be a place to retreat and a place of creation. Ancient Gnostic, Sumerian, and Egyptian texts all have recurring themes that link the process of creation to the underworld. In Mesopotamian creation stories, gods from the sky create a form of humanity that already exists on earth and those that live within it instead of on the surface. In many traditions, gods can dwell in the sky, underwater, or in the underworld or inner earth. That's the thing too, is like even Greek culture, I mean, Hades, god of the underworld, it's interesting that they're yeah. all of them talk about an underworld. Well, where is, is that underworld? That's so. That's such a good point. I never really connected Greek mythology back to it as well, but yeah, yeah they definitely did speak about that all of them norse mythology i mean Mm -hmm. you could go through all of them they all talk about some other like nether region or underworld or something Mm. it's like you know they explain a lot of other things that we can see and prove that are real but it's like could they be onto something but or could they just be referring to an underworld that's kind of like another dimension beneath our world in a way sure beneath our dimension right v- rather know, than a physical that plane that's for <laughs> sure what they meant by that right but it's interesting but they all talk about this like the same type mm-hmm. of place yeah we just don't know exactly maybe they just knew more about the dimensions and they were aware of mm-hmm. a dimension of what they call the underworld or where you go when you pass mm-hmm. and that's what they're referring to and it's just something that we can't perceive because we are we right. haven't traveled to that dimension yet right or visited that dimension so mm-hmm. that could be another another i guess possibility it would have been nice if they were a little more specific with what they meant you know <laughs> i think they're a little bit more deep than, no, than what kidding. we are now so <laughs> yeah they didn't really need to spell it out for us like mm-hmm. humans need today yeah that's true we but, needed like a guidebook <laughs> well and we're so like our society is so accustomed to not believing in anything unless there's like physical proof right in right, front of our eyes. Right. Mm-hmm. right. Yeah. You know? Well, we've like gone away from like a lot of people have gone away from spirituality uh, in, in their lives and just not considering the fact that there is more to our existence than just the physical mm-hmm. world, that there are other planes of existence, that spirituality is a real thing. I mean, it's been around since the beginning of time. Mm-hmm. and they all have similarities and stuff and obviously get into you know whose whose religion or whose beliefs are right i don't i don't think that's necessarily the case i think they're all right to some extent so it's just interesting all right that, and all wrong right, mm-hmm. right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah exactly they're all right and wrong in different ways but mm-hmm. i think that's part of the problem too is that spirituality is just not not something that's really taken as seriously as it once was yeah. and We're quite disconnected and right we're very disconnected just from spirit in general versus yeah. religion there's a difference between in my opinion there's a difference between religion and spirit and believing yes, in spirit I versus agree. an organized religion because mm-hmm. i believe a lot of religions are not far off from being a cult pretty much like there's mm-hmm. not a lot of differences in a lot of religions and just like and the all, or, the but, organized yeah. aspects of it i'm not talking about mm-hmm. the beliefs i'm talking about you know, the churches, temples, held. things, yeah, the way yeah. that it's actually organized mm-hmm. is very mm-hmm. similar to how a cult organizes its following. It's very, mm-hmm. there's not a lot of differences between them. Yeah, so, I would agree. So the further back in time a story originated, the larger the inner earth beings become, similar to how the dinosaurs are much larger than those that exist today. Giants are a prominent reoccurring theme in most cultures, and these giants are not extinct. Instead, they retreated to inner earth, some say. 
Sumerian gods are described as being 10 to 14 feet tall, which we've talked about these guys before. The Nephilim in the Hebrew Bible are described as the giant sons of gods, part human and part fallen angel. Native American traditions include giants with six fingers, six toes, double rows of teeth, and horns even. Another common theme is the number seven, which is believed to be symbolic in the underworld. In Sumerian texts, there are seven antediluvian sages, and in India, there are seven rishis. The legend of Easter Island says civilization was first brought there by seven initiated men, and classical Greek tradition has the seven sages of Greece. Hmm, connections there. Researchers studying these patterns believe they allude to outreach of a lost civilization, and that the beings who retreated beneath the surface have stayed in contact with humanity ever since. Modern accounts of interactions with extraterrestrial beings may actually be contact from not extraterrestrial beings, but ultra-terrestrial beings from inner Earth. And I believe this is this might be the same thing that's going on with all the UFO sightings, all these strange objects that are flying around with no explanation, that in fact these could be piloted, created by these ultra-terrestrials that just live in complete secrecy underground or wherever they live. Yeah. You know, we see them go into the ocean. Well, maybe there's an entrance to inner earth through the ocean. Right. You know, maybe that's the that easiest way sense, to go in and right? out. Mm-hmm. It really would make sense. So that possibility to me seems, you know, pretty, pretty likely, honestly, like that it's rather than some extraterrestrial from another star system, which could be, maybe it's in fact a, a long lost advanced civilization right. that's been here. Yeah, that could the be entire true. time. Mm-hmm. And that's why we've been seeing them forever. Yeah. Because it's like, because it's hard to pinpoint at what point did an extraterrestrial civilization land. And like, how, right. to me, like the <laughs> possibility of that being the case is slimming in my opinion, because I think that that just, there would be more evidence to point in that direction. I think because Maybe. this is such a mysterious mm-hmm. thing that it could be, in fact, some an actual civilization that's been here and yeah. been observing us from day one. Wow. That would be crazy. And there's plenty of places to hide. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there definitely is. So. And with how little we've explored our own fucking planet, our ocean, our crust. (laughs) Definitely. You can't say otherwise. Mm -hmm. I mean, you really can't, like, disprove it in any way. No. Stories about the inner Earth have been well documented throughout the years as well. And they're often told by highly respected and credible people. In 985 AD, the Viking explorer Eric the Red discovered Greenland. By 1410, there were anywhere from 10,000 to 100,000 Viking colonists living there. But this is the last recorded date that any Viking settler was seen. Their villages were suddenly abandoned and all the settlers vanished. And according to the native Inuits, the white men all went to the same place, the land of endless summer, a place of eternal bliss beneath the earth. In the 12th century, villagers of Woolpit in Suffolk, England, found two children wandering alone. The brother and sister had green skin. They kind of look like Shrek's children. (laughs) Shrek and and Fiona mated. (laughs) Yeah. And they did mate. They did. I think these are the kids grown up, honestly. (laughs) But they had unusual clothes on and spoke in an unknown language. They refused to eat anything except raw, broad beans. Mm, Probably not Shrek's kids then. Yeah, that's right. That's (laughs) true. That is true. As they assimilated to their new home, their skin gradually lost its green color and they started eating more foods. The boy got sick and died, but the sister survived and learned to speak fluent English. She explained that they came from a place called St. Martin's Land, where everything was green. There was no sun, only light that looked like twilight. They were herding cattle and followed the animals into the cave. They got lost, started following the sound of bells, and ended up emerging in the surface world in Woolpit. Yeah, so basically like an underground world. Mm-hmm. It, it, this is like a, a legend. I yeah, believe, so. I think people get that. <laughs> really? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> in 1895, a Nobel Prize winner and Norwegian explorer, Dr. Frijaw Nansen, set off on an expedition to the North Pole. On the way, he got lost and emerged in a mysterious land that he didn't recognize and it didn't exist on any map. As he traveled, the freezing cold temperature continued to rise until it was unbearably hot. To this day, no one knows for sure where he was. The dude was exploring the North Pole, and then he ended up somewhere hot. Yeah, that doesn't make in a the lot process, of sense. And, and he said he was somewhere that wasn't on the map. So perhaps he wandered his way into Agartha. It's just so hard because you don't have any proof. 
Yeah. How do we know? Well, he it was eighteen ninety five. I mean, what I proof know. was he supposed to get? He should take out his iPhone and take yeah, a pic. What the hell, bro? Live stream this sketch shit. Sketch a <laughs> sketch a picture. Sketch some artwork of it. It's just kind of hard to believe, but it is interesting because I mean, well, if he was in Antarctica. I'm going to tell you a very interesting and very credible account to somebody who may have stumbled into the inner civilization. But before we get into that, we're going to take one more break, and we'll be right back. There's a specialist for just about everything, right? When my car breaks down, I go to a mechanic. When there's a problem with my shower, I call a plumber. So when you want to get your uneven crooked teeth fixed, you see an orthodontist. They're the specialists, right? And that's what sets Candid the invisible, comfortable, and removable liners above the rest. While poorly reviewed or insanely priced clear aligner companies use general dentists, Candid only works with the specialists, orthodontists. With Candid, the same orthodontist who created your plan is with you from start to finish, so you never have to wonder how you're doing, and you know you're getting the right treatment. Your treatment is prescribed and closely monitored remotely by this licensed orthodontist who's an expert in tooth movement, and you can book an appointment at a Candid studio near you or do everything from the comfort and convenience of your own home, so it doesn't matter where you live. The average Candid treatment is just six months, and you'll start seeing results way before then. Best of all, it costs thousands of dollars less than traditional braces. And with your free aligner treatment, you'll get Candid's teeth whitening for free. Who doesn't want to have straighter and whiter teeth? I think pretty much everybody does. So why not give Candid a try today? They can help you get the straighter, brighter smile you've always wanted. And right now you can save $75 on your Candid starter kit when you get started from home. Or you can book an appointment at a Candid studio near you today. Go to CandidCO.com slash milehire and use code milehire. That's CandidCO.com slash milehire. Use code milehire. And take advantage of this limited time offer to save $75 on your starter kit. Again, guys, that's candidco.com slash mile higher and make sure you use code mile higher. So I never really struggled much with acne as a teenager. I got a few pimples here and there and it wasn't a big deal, but my acne really came in in my mid 20s and boy, did it come in. I was so frustrated. I didn't know what products to use, if maybe I was making it worse with what I was using. And one thing that I have really loved adding to my skincare routine is Curology. Whether you are trying to take control of your acne or if acne is no longer your top skin concern, maybe it's fine lines, dark spots, occasional breakouts or clogged pores, Curology will customize a prescription formula with three active ingredients picked just for you to tackle your personal skincare needs. To get your treatment plan, start by answering questions online about your skin and sending in a couple of selfies to Curology. Next, Curology matches you with a licensed dermatology provider who gets to know your skin. And if it's a good fit, you'll get customized prescription cream to address your acne, fine lines, dark spots, and more. I have the Curology cream. I use it every night and it has things in it that you'd only be able to get if you were prescribed it. It's nothing you can get over the counter. So that's what's so nice about it is it makes it easier than having to go in and see a dermatologist. It's just such an easy process. The fact that you can do it all from your home and that they do such a good job of analyzing your selfies you send in and they get you on a formula that's perfect for you. And they ship your personalized formulas right to your door. It's super easy. So take control of acne, dark spots, breakouts, whatever your unique concerns may be with a powerful skincare treatment made just for you today. Go to Curology.com slash milehire for a free 30-day trial. All you got to do is pay shipping and handling. That's Curology, C-U-R-O-L-O-G-Y.com slash milehire. And that will unlock your free 30-day trial. See Curology.com for all of the details. So the stories of Inner Earth actually have a few connections to Nazi Germany, surprisingly. Members of the Tool Society, founded in Germany in 1918, were early Nazi sympathizers interested in finding the origins of the Aryan race. They promoted the Tibetan legends relating to inner earth, and some members became obsessed with finding the entrances. During Hitler's rise to power, he sent a team of explorers to find the entrance to inner earth in Antarctica. Henrik Broden, headed the mission in a German U-boat or a naval submarine. And when they returned, Henrik reported that they found the entrance and actually traveled to inner earth, a paradise that none of them wanted to leave. He also confirmed that the earth is hollow. After World War II, a legend emerged that Hitler and members of his inner circle used this information in order to escape justice 
fleeing to Antarctica and disappearing through the entrance to inner earth. This is quite a popular theory actually. And there's some interesting points to the whole Hitler. Yeah. Escaping. It is. It's very weird. Esca yeah. There's, there's quite a bit of evidence. I mean, the only thing they have as evidence was a skull that they ended up finding out was a woman's skull. Mm -hmm. um, so they, they do have no evidence that he That's died. That's wild. Yeah. That's really wild to think about. But as the dust settled after the war, more than 20 million people were still unaccounted for. The German Red Cross launched a massive search effort, but by 1959, over 2 million people were still missing. It was recently announced that this search will officially end in 2023. And as of now, the fates of 1.2 million people who vanished during World War II are still unknown. That's, That's unbelievable, dude. 1.2 million people. Most people do not know that. No, and that there's the search was still on till 2023. Yeah. They're finally wow. going to end the search. <laughs> I wonder like how actively they are. Yeah, I don't I don't know what now, that though. what that entails, but that's pretty crazy wow. to think that they're actually s still searching for yeah. all these missing people. So many mm -hmm. believe that the only possible explanation for this is that these missing people escaped perhaps with Hitler to inner earth, which <laughs> I, that's a wild I which, thought which, that's yeah. definitely not the only possible explanation. No, no. There's <laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> we can't find of. them. Hitler brought them to the inner earth, <laughs> which, which especially after just reading, you know, just talking about the Hindu connections and stuff. I can't imagine that Shambhala would be like Hitler. Yeah, come on yeah. in. Join us Seriously. in peace and harmony. And <laughs> yeah, Shambhala. That's, real. No. that's that is a good point. No, I'm sure there's they're a like, lot of theories about you're not getting into this. Yeah. Or yeah. or maybe they put him into some advanced craft and like sent him off to another <laughs> other planet or something, <laughs> expelled him from the Jesus. earth. I mean, there are a lot of theories about, you know, the Nazis escaping to Antarctica, possibly be building a base there that they have UFO technology there. I mean, there's some interesting ideas around it for sure. Yeah. No, we. I mean, I think we haven't we covered that whole. We have. Yeah, we have. About Antarctica. In we depth, definitely like have. the whole the whole theory yeah. behind that. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's really interesting. So, I mean, it's not out of the question, but whether or not do I think he actually went to Inner Earth? Eh, probably not. Have we ever done an episode on Hitler though, and his no. possible escape? No, we have. We should. We did a very short video on it years ago on my channel, uh, but it that was might be a really brief. lights out topic though. Hit Maybe Hitler? no, but uh, the escape oh, we wouldn't talk okay. about. I mean, just like the what conspiracy happened after theories. the war, yeah. and where did he go? I and think, what possible locations? I think these guys would find it pretty interesting okay. if you haven't well, heard about it. I mean, well, let us know. Let there's us know. some interesting things to ponder when it comes to that one. Yeah, no, there definitely is. I mean, the whole the whole Nazis escaping is is very. Mm -hmm. I mean, the fact that we even hired Nazis to work in our classified projects on yeah. our on our military Operation Paperclip mm -hmm. shit was wild. Yeah. Yeah. So I think there's a lot more to that story for sure. Yeah. But one of the most credible witnesses for inner earth was an American aviator named rear admiral Richard Burr jr. Who led multiple expeditions to both the South pole and the North pole. Richard bird fought in both world wars and was one of the most highly decorated officers in military history, including receiving the medal of honor, which they don't just give that out to anybody. He was a practical military man, not a writer or a poet, and always kept detailed fact-based logs. In 1947, he led a team on an expedition to the North Pole, and when he returned, it was clear that they had experienced something extraordinary. He was actually interviewed on live TV in 1954, where he gave some vague details about the expedition, referring to the land as an everlasting mystery and the most peaceful place in the world. He said multiple times, I'd like to see the land beyond the pole, and it's the center of the great unknown. Mm -hmm. He called this a vast new territory that wasn't on any map and the most important place left in the world for science. And these vague descriptions and mysterious comments didn't fit his reputation as a serious military officer or the ice-covered landscape of Antarctica. Because Richard had flown into this vast unexplored landscape for 1,700 miles, and he had already discovered two previously unknown land areas measuring a total of 4,000 miles across. But after his public statements, these accounts disappeared. In 1956, the mm. editor of Flying Saucer magazine tried to publish a story about Richard Byrd's discoveries, but the issue disappeared, and the printing plates were later found badly damaged, and the story <laughs> wow. was gone. So it's somebody was like trying that, to silence just, it. Yeah. yeah, I mean, and why? Mm -hmm. Unless it's true. Yep. 
Not only that, after World War II, Richard led Operation High Jump, which we talked about in our Antarctica episode, which was an expedition to Antarctica to find natural mm. resources, or that's the official plan behind yeah. it. Later, the purpose of the mission was officially changed to training military personnel and establishing a research base there. The expedition involved 33 aircrafts, 13 Navy ships, and almost 5,000 soldiers, which doesn't make sense for either of those two types of missions. It was eventually revealed that the true reason for the expedition was to find the Nazi leaders believed to be hiding in Antarctica. Richard cut the eight-month mission short when the Chilean press reported many fatalities of soldiers. Mm -hmm. The remaining soldiers were evacuated and their accounts were immediately classified. But details of these classified accounts leaked and the soldiers had described attacks by highly advanced saucer-shaped airships. Richard told a Chilean newspaper that the U.S. could be attacked by flying objects that could travel from one pole to the other at incredibly fast speeds. We're talking 50 plus years ago that this happened. When the Secretary of Defense, James Forrestal, tried to speak publicly about the expedition, he was forced to resign and later admitted to the psych ward of a military hospital in Bethesda. Wow. Where he wasn't allowed to see or talk to anyone, not even his wife, and he was later found dead, and they ruled his death a suicide. Mm. Fishy. Okay. Sounds like a lot of other you know, stories where they just got rid of people. Yeah. After Richard Byrd's death, his son published his personal diary. And according to the diary, he had been sworn to secrecy by what he called the monstrous military industrial complex. Mm, surpri mm, no surprise yeah, there. Yeah. He wrote the account in secret, hoping one day the truth could be known, writing, hopefully the greed and exploitation of mankind can no longer suppress that which is truth. During mm. the 1700 mile flight, he explains that the ice turned into forests, lakes, rivers, and mountains. He saw animal life he had never seen before, including a species of mammoth that had long been extinct. Wow, that would be cool. Think about where this is coming from. This is coming from, yeah. why would this guy lie about this? Yeah, for what? Yeah, why? That makes no sense. He said space vehicles flew alongside him and took control of his plane. Oh, wow. And he landed safely in a place called Agartha and was greeted by the city's inhabitants. He and his crew were taken to the ruler who said they had allowed him to enter the realm because of his high moral character, which mm. tells you that they were watching, observing, knew exactly who he was. Yeah. Or they have some ability to sense, like, are you intentions, a good soul or not? Yeah. And like, what's your intentions? Yeah. They had been worried about the surface world ever since the U.S. dropped atomic bombs. They had tried to stop it, but their craft was attacked by the military. The leader gave Richard a message to bring back to the surface that the safety of humans and the survival of the planet was at risk. Richard and his crew were then taken back to their plane and guided home. And when he returned, he briefed the Pentagon about this warning and he was ordered to remain silent. Damn, yeah. see why would they order you to remain silent unless what you're saying has something right. to it? Go, nobody's gonna believe you, go yeah, tell whatever. the world, like, mm -hmm. you're crazy, dude. Mm -hmm. Damn, I really hope Agartha exists. I really do, maybe it's like our only chance well, when the surface becomes inhabitable, yeah, what are your that's options? That's what I'm saying. Leave the earth or go into the earth. Wow. Yeah. That's really yeah. crazy to wrap your head around. It is. It really is. I mean, I, I don't know. I think this guy's testimony is pretty compelling. It is. Ten years later, in an entry dated December 30th, 1956, he wrote his final thoughts, saying that he had to keep the secret all these years, but he didn't want the story to die with him. And he ends with a sentence in all caps, that reads, for I have seen that land beyond the pole, that center of the great unknown. Wow. Crazy. That's really crazy. Very interesting. Uh, that to me is like, that would make sense why mm -hmm. they're hiding the poles and why they, nobody can fly over them. Why can't people fly over them? Yeah. I mean, damn. It it's really does lot. make a lot of sense. Mind blown. <laughs> it's like, what? Yeah. This could be a real possibility. Mm hmm. There's a lot more to this theory than people realize. I think they just hear hollow earth or any type of earth theory and it just makes you question everything you know. So people are just like, oh, it's a ton of bullshit. But I don't think the average person knows a lot of these other details about no. ancient cultures and people who have claimed to see these things. And of course, it might all be bullshit. Of course. Right. Well, that that's the hard thing about it is that for every credible person that says something mm -hmm. that's compelling like this, there's another person that's claiming that they're right. they're you know somehow involved in like mm -hmm. 
working with the people of inner earth on our behalf and stuff like there's lots of people out there i won't i won't name any names but there's people out there and on the internet that have a whole following of people that believe that they're have these unique psychic abilities to channel messages to travel you know through the astral realm to these different basically teleport themselves to different locations and so i think that's what happens is that people who don't have really any credibility to their name you know a a man that's won a medal of honor i think has more credibility than somebody that's a self-proclaimed right. psychic a part of yeah. some like secret program or something definitely i think you're gonna you know most people are gonna say okay i, I believe the admiral over this guy mm. so i think that's really what happens with a lot of of these mm. theories is that you just start getting people that are like oh i want in on this action and they start figuring out ways that they can sort of be known for these types of theories and and then what happens is just the credibility goes down, 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 because more and more people are are seeing this person that's presenting this evidence and saying, oh, yeah, like I talked to the the leader of Agartha and, you know, they told me this or that or, you know, yeah. and they have no credibility, no proof, no mm -hmm. nothing. And it's like and it's just like too specific. Like, mm -hmm. I think Admiral Byrd's story is actually pretty, like, believable. I mean, yeah. to go there, they let him in and then told him to take this message back and then that was like the extent of it, it wasn't like you know he went there and he's like the yeah. fact that he was even trusted to right right brief them to right. brief them on it yeah right no Higher like up. oh yeah i partied for five days down in the gartha it was lit there's waterfalls <laughs> like it sounds like the it. Alcohol i want to go down there like damn like, <laughs> <laughs> whatever their alcohol is just hits different. hits different you start floating when you're drunk their you're weed like, hits different yeah it's like everything's <laughs> that a, sounds a whole amazing different layer, that so. gives me some hope it's very and then a lot of anxiety about the planet and i know we were world, just talking about this today like yeah it seems like a lot of people have the same thoughts of you know wanting if you want to start a family in these times oh god don't even get me to, to, say, oh god. to bring we'll never leave. children into the world no i'm just I'm, it's just like my daily thoughts i'm trying to <laughs> I, <laughs> I just i just want to put out the message that as negative as everything seems and out of control everything seems you have to remember that obviously there's things that are that are bad that are happening i the planet is is hurting it is mm -hmm. definitely hurting but at the same time we don't know what the planet has in store for us right just or like we don't things can happen we don't know how, what yeah. the natural world has in store we don't know what the universe has in store for we the don't know if there's a whole other space to go that's bigger than the surface of our earth right underneath us. right right <laughs> that's just beyond i mean wow. what if our future is it's so hard to think about that is like we need to allow the surface of the planet to recover mm -hmm. so you have one of two choices you're either getting on Jeff Bezos penis rocket Hell no, I'm getting on and, Jeff and Bezos you're flying penis. to the Amazon enterprise in outer space and living there. No. Or you go to Agartha. If you're spiritually, Agartha. you know, inclined enough to be able to exist peacefully with all the other people of inner earth, then you have that opportunity too. Or you just die or, or you die or it ends for you. And, you start life again. Uh, so, but then I get nervous. So I'm like, okay, if we go to the, if we go to Agartha, <laughs> sounds so weird to say. Then, aren't we just gonna like start wars with the people and the civilization? No, or it's not. Who's a, you, there? you're not even allowed in there unless you are beyond. You have evolved past your ego, and you, you there's no ego attachments there. It's all peace and harmony. There, there's that's probably why like, they would want to keep it. Safe. You can't. How do you can? How do you control that at the end of the day? I don't know. You can. We have can, to ask them about their policies and how they <laughs> manage it. What is your test? terms of service? Maybe it's like a metal detector. You walk through it, and it's like good, bad, <laughs> reject. To hell you go. Get this well, guy out. It would work the exact same way that they let Admiral Burt down there. They clearly mm. have a a system for it. Mm. There's yeah. clearly or something. unless they accidentally like, oh, this motherfucker slipped through the crack. Yeah, they're like, damn, <laughs> that one dude, that one time. Well, to be able to exist in that sort of environment, and if it really is like the remnants of the atlanteans and this this advanced civilization that is far more intelligent than us then they're get, there's going to be different you know you're going to have to if you go in there there's going to be some sort of they're going to have to raise you up to where they're at because yeah. we're clearly not evolved enough to and maybe if you do just like accidentally wander in there like maybe some of the missing people in the world are there just throwing that out there i mean who mm. knows but it's kind of interesting to think about 
maybe they would keep you there so that you don't tell other people or you can have the choice to remain there. And maybe some people would actually choose because it is so great to stay. Could be. <laughs> it's just like, yeah, so wild. There's so many different possibilities. About. Yeah. I think so many people just dismiss this because you're like, oh, whatever. There's, there's no holes in the earth. But then when you look at everything as a whole, mm. you realize there's fucking holes in the earth. Like, well, if you don't believe it, I'm curious because I mean, I don't know if I believe it fully, but like, what do you think they are protecting? Because clearly something is being protected near the poles. Are they you talking about you NASA and, and the yeah. Earth's governments? I mean, what else are they protecting? I can see there? them protecting like super high technology, high class technology. But even to fly over it, that's odd. Well, because like if a commercial plane flies over it, then theoretically couldn't. I mean, who knows? They could be hiding things that are like mm-hmm. out out of this world or to the average person out of this technology right that's that's a good point i've kind of thought about it could be like sort of a stranger things type situation where there's a research a government research facility there that's completely top secret where they're Mm -hmm. actually like they're maybe they haven't gone into it before but they're sort of measuring stuff and trying Mm -hmm. to like observe this entrance to inner earth and Mm -hmm. you know there's some sort of facilities there that they don't want anybody to know about that they're monitoring whatever's going on there that's sure. what i thought about is why i mean why would nasa you know be so picky about what right. they show for the po- i mean we've always been taught that there's nothing at the poles right like, there's just that's what they want us to think barren land but it seems yeah. like there's actually more going on hmm. than I don't know. we can even see or even think about yeah so let us know are you in for the expedition that I am leading to inner <laughs> earth. <laughs> Crazy enough, there was somebody that actually did this type of thing. They're like, we're going to go explore inner earth. It was like in 2007, somebody like oh, organized really? an expedition. It was like 20,000 a person oh, or something. Wow. And they're like, we're going to go just go into inner earth. We're going to go to the poles. And then it ended up like falling mm. apart, of course. Yeah. Well, they better have gotten their refunds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say you're gonna need a little bit more money than twenty thousand a grand. person. Yeah. yeah, it sounds like some fire fest bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was like some same type of thing as like storming area fifty one, some kind of like fucking yeah crazy person that was like, Oh yeah, let's do this. Well, I mean, I'm I believe in it more than I thought I would yeah. after researching. I feel like you were pretty skeptical mm-hmm. when I was like, Yeah, let's cover this. You're like, Well, like, it wasn't completely like no, that. But I, mean, I always been like, more open to the idea of that than mm-hmm. flat earth it's flat earth that i really just can't even i yeah. can't i just can't <laughs> i just can't <laughs> but this this actually does make a lot of sense and thinking about what the older cultures were saying and how this, this just goes back so far and privacy around them now it, may, it does make you think it's possible especially with that seismic um data Mm-hmm. you know it really i mean could if be there, there is really all this water under there then where there's water there's life right so. i mean mm-hmm. maybe there's not a whole civilization there but i i would definitely believe that there could be you know fish I mean, and other yeah. underwater species or 25 miles the crust and you there's got to be some know, type of life under there caves going that like thrives in the heat yeah crazy extremophiles I think yeah. is what they're called uh, I don't know. It's pretty interesting stuff. I want to know what you guys think about this. Do you believe in this theory? Do you think it could be possible? Are you kind of on the fence like us? Let us know in the comments below. We love to hear your thoughts. But that is going to be it for Mile Higher this week, guys. We will be back next week with a true crime episode. So look forward to that. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Give us a little thumbs up and you can also subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts and Spotify, which really helps. Please do helps. it there. That helps yes, us out a lot. That really helps out our numbers. Uh, YouTube isn't completely factored into the ads and everything. So if you want to make a difference for our show, actually subscribing, whether you listen or not on those platforms, really does help if you subscribe and download the audio version. But yeah, that's, that is it. For this week guys we hope you found this episode to be as interesting as we did and we'll see you guys next time but until then keep on taking your mind a mile higher